Makarska, one of Croatia's top destinations and definitely if you're looking for a beach, the Makarska Riviera is the best place on the Adriatic with about 62 kilometers of beach all along. And over the years, Makarska has become known as a place for sort of beaches, party tourism, fairly cheap tourism, a lot of Eastern European guests coming along and there are lots and lots of numbers every year. But actually there's another story to Makarska because before the war it was definitely one of the premier places to come in Croatia, uh, along with Hvar, Dubrovnik and so on. And it has a stunning, stunning old town which most tourists who come here don't even know about. In fact, uh, there was a really good quote I heard today from uh, a guest who had been coming for 10 years and he actually didn't realise that Makarska actually had an old town. Uh, he was just coming for the beach and for the party and for the cheap food and so on. And so there's been a real revolution in tourism in Makarska in the last two or three years. And I think it's one of the most interesting stories in Croatian tourism. So there was a change of government and the mayor and deputy mayor, who are both uh, very experienced entrepreneurs and from Makarska, decided to come back and try and make some positive change and to transform the tourism, which has been, become known as mass tourism, lots of apartments sort of cheap tourism, cheap food, and try and uh, regenerate life in the old town itself because most people just spend the time on the beach and they don't really know there is an old town. And the old town of Makowska is beautiful. I'm on the street called Kala Larga, which is the longest street in the old town. And it has a really interesting story that's been developing in the last uh, two or three years. So until recently, Makowska was known as a place for party tourism, for boats, and for beach tourism. And there was a park called uh, Pescaria and it's a beautiful, beautiful peninsula just within walking distance from the old town. And over time, there have been little concessions given for fast food, for cheap food. And this has grown and grown and grown. And it was initially meant to be just for local people, but about 70% of the stands now, until a couple of years ago, were owned by uh, foreigners who had actually maybe perhaps bought these from, from the local people. They were all sort of dubiously legal. They didn't have the minimum technical requirements for a, for a restaurant and they were sort of undermining what was happening in the old town itself with restaurants who were paying their dues uh, throughout the year. And when the mayor came in, he decided that this had to change and the image of Makaska had to change and this particular peninsula had to change as well. It's a beautiful park and it has a great potential. And it's a very brave move because uh, trying to change these sort of things in Croatia, you always come across a lot of resistance. And they were given two years notice, but they were told that after two years, that all these semi-permanent stands would have to go and the place once more become just a park. And that came into effect in January the 1st last year, in 2023. And so after years and years and years of having this sort of cheap food, cheap tourism, this was taken away. And the result has been quite interesting because all those foreigners who came in there decided mostly to take their businesses elsewhere. Some of the locals who were there decided to move back into the town. And what you've seen in the last sort of one or two years has been a real transformation of the old town of Makarska. And I'm on this main street called Kala Larga, and they have this fantastic project called Lokali Ukali, so locals in, in, in Kala Larga. And they have a real vision to try and return Makarska to its roots of its traditions and stuff. There are no, there's no plastic sort of souvenirs here. There are no cheap souvenirs. And on this particular street, what they're trying to do, as you can see, is to encourage local artisans, local businesses, cool bars, cool restaurants to come in here. So what you get is a truly Mediterranean um, authentic feel. And I have to say, I've, I've walked along here, I've been here all day, and I think it's the first time I've been in Dalmatia in many years, talking to lots of people today, that I haven't heard anybody complaining, because the Dalmatians are very good at complaining. And people really here are seeing the difference in the old town, and it's coming back to life. And on this particular street, I'm going down, I'm talking to some of the people. We also have some foreigners coming in here now and actually deciding to uh, try and open businesses here. So I'm at this uh, cafe bar called uh, Drop. And this is one of two speciality coffee places that have opened up in Halalaga in the last couple of years or so. And this has been opened by a German family who came here two years ago, bought a place and started to open it up and it's become an instant hit. Uh, just a few meters away, there's an incredible Thai restaurant and it's a local guy from Makoska and his Thai wife and they had a restaurant in Melbourne and uh, they came here and his wife really, really loved uh, Makoska and so they've uh, relocated here and quite incredibly, they're open 12 months a year 
and uh, to find a, a high quality Asian restaurant on the coast 12 months a year is something. But what's really interesting is that uh, they're able to finance uh, their winter through locals coming and enjoying the food. So this is one more addition to what's happening here in, uh, in Makoska in, uh, in, in Cala Larga. And the city authorities, they've realised that uh, if they want to bring life back into, into the old town, what they have to do is they have to encourage that. And so uh, they are giving financial support to any businesses who are of a certain category in terms of artisan and so on, traditional. There's now a, a shoemaker doing things the traditional way. To get the grants, you have to be open six months a year and to, to fit those qualifications. And the atmosphere, I mean, it's the, it's the 2nd of May, so it's, it's pre-season, obviously. But just walking through here, it's one of the most authentic feels I've felt in an old town. I mean, Stary Grad on Clar, uh, Kortula maybe, but for Makoska, it's fantastic. What I'm realizing here is that there is, in Makoska, this tradition, this heritage, and it's been lost over the years with all this mass tourism. And now there is a push to really try and change that and to limit the mass tourism as much as possible to take away that sort of image of uh, cheap, cheap tourism. This park at Pescaria, which was formerly full of all these different cheap stalls, uh, now is a sort of green area. And I was there earlier today walking around and you can see kids playing and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. But they now have uh, international architects doing a tender and this will be redeveloped and 20% of that land will be used for entertainment centres, hospitality centres, but it's going to all can be done in a sustainable way and on a very, very high quality way. So if that happens in the next one or two years, I think the image of Makarosko is going to be radically, radically different and the effect for local people is going to be, I think, quite significant. And you can already feel, talking to local people today, they're very, very happy with the change. They're very happy with the fact that the old town has come to life again. What's been built can't be unbuilt. And so one of the big problems that Makoska has had over the years has been lots and lots of apartments. But the new administration now has limited uh, what can be built in the future. So there'll be no more four-storey buildings. And also one of the things that's been happening is uh, people have been getting permissions to build a park hotel, which is like a group of apartments with a kind of reception area. And legally it's easier to get permission to build these things than it is to get permission to build apartments. And then what's happened is people have got these, have built these, and then they've sold off individual apartments to foreigners coming in. And that's no longer possible. So in terms of moving forward and construction going forward, there are now limits on it. And uh, one of the things I really, really liked was the attitude to parking, because parking in Makoska in the season is a nightmare, uh, because there are so many people coming in and parking is limited. And uh, what they've done is they've realized that they can either pour a lot more concrete and build a lot more parking spaces, or they can try and change habits. And trying to change habits in Dalmatia is quite difficult. But what they did last year was they increased the price of parking to four euros an hour uh, on the river, which is pretty expensive. And people were a little bit shocked. But uh, before that, the, the, the habit was to drive your car down to the river to go and have a coffee and then drive back again. And ultimately, Makarska, most things are walkable. And so people now are, rather than spending sort of four or eight euros uh, on, on parking to, to come down to the river, they're deciding to leave the car at home and to walk. And even now in peak season, there is like 10% of parking spaces are, are, are empty. And so uh, changing that culture of, uh, of, uh, of, of driving and parking is uh, one way to tackle the problem. So what I like about the administration is unlike many administrations, they come from the private sector. The mayor has been an entrepreneur for many years. I was walking around town today. I bumped into a guy from New Zealand who recognized me from my YouTube channel. He's been here for 20 years or so. And he said that in 2008, he was taking uh, Zoran, the mayor, around the vineyards of uh, New Zealand. And he was out there to, to educate himself and to learn. And after that, he started the Dalmatia Wine Expo. So an administration that comes in a private sector that looks at problems and solutions rather than just going along with the status quo. So to me, after a day here, I came here thinking this is just another Dalmatian destination, which everything is focused on the beach. And it's absolutely not. There is a, there's a real strategy here about how to move things forward. One of the other things that's really happened in the last two years in Makarska is finally, we have two major hotel companies that have opened here in Makarska. So we have Aminas, who are based in Novigrad, who are expanding slowly down the coast. And we have Balamar, who are the biggest hotel group in, uh, in Croatia. And with those two hotels arriving, we also have the benefit of their strategy and their knowledge. And they're working with the city now to help 
a lot more with targeting and with strategy. And so there's a real feeling here that there is synergy between the public and private sector in, in terms of developing a strategy to move Makarska forward. And rather than the stereotype of it being a beach destination, the city wants to be known really as a tourism destination which is based on three basic principles, gastronomy, sport and culture. And uh, they have various uh, gastronomic events, and, but to me the most interesting thing is the sport. So Makoska has a tennis tradition, it has a tennis club. Uh, which is now under the management of Valamar. And Croatia has a female WTA tournament every year uh, from a guy called Felix Lukas. And uh, Felix has been running this on the island of Brach in Bol for many years. And there was a discussion between him and the city about moving this to Makarska. And what's happened is that Valamar decided to buy into this uh, project. Uh, the city decided to support it. And Felix has moved over this uh, wonderful event to Makarska to the tennis club, uh, but also at the same time, Balamar decided to invest into the tennis centre. And I was there a month ago in February, and it was a beautiful sunny day, it was full. It was local people playing, and this club is, is moving forward. And so this is one example of how the public and private partnership can come together for the betterment of life of local people. And now in June, we'll have this international event, and uh, it'll be taking place, I think, for the third year in Makarska and this is one more confirmation of Makarska as a destination. Uh, at the same time, uh, Makarska will also be host hosting the European Rugby Sevens, which again is a prestigious tournament for the, for the city. So here we have a destination which is looking to work beyond the peak summer season, is looking to develop itself as a destination of culture, of gastronomy, of sport. Of course the peak season is always going to be about the beach and uh, mass tourism and there's nothing that can be done to change that and a lot of money is made on that. But there are many, many other things in the shoulder season that, that are happening and are developing and just honestly walking around the old town today uh, was mind-blowing. And simple things like uh, with parking, so you have parking on the, on the river, so you sit and have your coffee and you've got cars in front of you, you're five meters away from the sea and you can't see the sea. So in May uh, they have sections where they have uh, parking but only for motorbikes, not for cars. And so this is like one little concession where you know uh, they're making, uh, making things a little bit easier for people to enjoy themselves. It's a town, over, it's early May so it's, uh, it's the nicest time to be in Croatia because everybody's fresh for a new season, nobody's complaining. I don't know, the, the, the combination between of, of locals just enjoying and, and tourists here and stuff, it's a, it's a really really nice atmosphere in town and I think the potential to develop Makarska as a cultural, sporting, gastronomic destination and move away from this stereotype of mass tourism is really like, enticing and interesting. And I've bumped into several foreigners today who live here. Uh, they've just, they recognize me from YouTube and they've, uh, they've come and have a chat. And they're really, really positive. And the nice thing here is that in two or three years of this administration, they've managed to affect change. And affecting change in Croatia can take years and years and years. And nobody I've spoken to today has been against what's happening. They, they see that here are two passionate people, uh, the mayor and deputy mayor from the town that, that want a better future for the town. So I think, you know, Makarska is going to be an interesting place to watch. It's nice to see this German family doing their, doing their cafe and the, the, the Thai lady there and I'm sure there'll be many more. I met a digital nomad who's been here for two years and she's loving life here. And so whatever you think of Makarska before, if, if like me you had the stereotype of a place to avoid because of, of, of mass tourism, for sure in the season in July and August it's going to be crazy, but there is a lot happening in the old town and it's definitely worth coming to check it out.